Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, it is the new year. It is 2020. It is January 1st, 2020. Like, mind blown. Now, you guys are not going to see this until January 2nd. So, I do want to first say Happy New Year to everyone and Happy Holidays. If you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, just Happy Merry Belated Christmas, Hanukkah, and all that great stuff. I'm a little festive today. Got my Christmas ears on or my Christmas headband bow and my New Year shirt just because whatever but um yes today we are diving into the faith beads readathon it started on the first but you're not going to see this video up to the second but it started and um i ain't start reading yet but you know i want to show you guys the books that i have that i want to tackle for the month of january which is a little insane because i have like thousands of other books that i need to read that are secular for like reviews pray for me um yeah so Faith Reads Readathon. I have my prompts here as well as the photo challenges. But if you want to see the photo challenges, just check my Instagram. They'll be there. But um, yeah, we have the prompts. I have all 10 here. I have about nine books. I don't have 10. And I know in the original Faith Read, Read Faith Reads Readathon announcement, I mentioned um, some types of books. But I have finally selected my actual TBR for this and I'm super super excited so we're gonna dive into the first prompt is to read a book based on a well-known biblical person and for me I'm gonna go with Iscariot by Tosca Lee Judas we all know who Judas is the betrayer of Jesus the one who sold Jesus for some 30 pieces of silver or something like that he, he sold he sold them out sold them out and we all know the story we know he committed suicide but I want to read this because I want to see what could have been going through his head and give him more of um a humane kind of outlook humane does that make sense i want to look at him more in a sense of him being a, a man with struggles and temptations and really dealing with that um and not just the betrayer of jesus so i'm interested to dive into this i'm super super excited it's just about J judas iscariot it just says the story you thought you knew they will say that i have betrayed him that i reduce his price to 30 silver shekels that I turned against my master. They do not know me. Judas Iscariot. History has called him many things. Thief, liar, traitor. Reviled throughout history and infamous for his suicide. He is a man whose very name is synonymous with betrayal. And the only disciple that Jesus called friend. That's actually shocking now that I think about it. Yeah, that's actually pretty true. Wow. Okay. So, um, Iscariot is a compelling portrait of biblical history's most maligned character from his tumultuous childhood to his emergence as a man known to the world as a betrayer of jesus but even more is an extraordinary review into the life of jesus that forces us to re-examine everything we thought we knew about the most famous and infamous religious icons in history so i'm excited to see how this goes i don't think i've read anything by tasca lee um as of yet though she's been on my list to read from so this is my pick for the first prompt the second prompt is to read a book based on a lesser known biblical person and I think for that one I had Slender Reads um, about Jochebed which is the mother of Moses but she's still like in between for me so I'm going to go with this one which I totally forgot I had on my shelf until I looked on my shelf. Zipporah, the wife of Moses. Um, we only hear about Zipporah one time. One time in the book of Exodus and I want to know more about her and because I have this book and it fits the whole theme of the prompt I thought to go with her. Um, and yeah, we're going to read the back real quick. It just says, although she is a Kushite by birth, one of the people of the land to the south, Zipporah grew up as the beloved daughter of Jethro, high priest and sage of the Midianites. But the color of Zipporah's skin set her apart, making her an outsider to the men of her adopted tribe who do not want her as their wife. Ooh, they don't want her because she black? Come on now, get it together, people. Anyways, then one day while drawing water from a well, she meets a handsome young stranger. Like her, he is an outsider, a Hebrew raised in the house of the Egyptian pharaoh. Moses is a fugitive forced to flee from his homeland. Zipporah realizes that this man will be the husband and partner she never thought she would have. Moses wants nothing more than a peaceful life with the Midianites, but Zipporah won't let Moses forget his path or turn away from his true identity. She refuses to marry him until he returns to Egypt to free his people. Uh-oh, all right. 
God was using her. Um, <laughs> when God reveals himself to Moses in a burning bush, his words echo the pores, and Moses returns to Egypt with his passionate and generous wife by his side. A woman ahead of her time, Zipporah leaps from the pages of this remarkable novel. Bold, independent, and a true survivor, she is a captivating heroine, and her world of deserts, temples, and ancient wonders is a fitting backdrop to an epic tale. So, yes, I'm excited to know more about Zipporah. I don't know much about her outside of her being the daughter of um, Jethro. That, that's pretty much all that I know. I came across her name one time in Exodus, so she's lesser known. I'm, I'm going to read this book, and it looks like it's going to be fun. So, yeah. We, we have that the third prompt is to read a book that has a title based on a book in the bible so like esther by angela hunt you could read that book but i'm going with two options for this the first one is a non-fiction and that's going to be 31 proverbs to light your path by liz curtis higgs it's just about 31 different proverbs i don't know if it goes through all 31 proverbs or if she picks out select scriptures but i do want to get into the habit of reading the proverbs every other month um and because there's 31 days this month i figured why not pull this one out so this is an option but i have another one but we have this one um and it just says take heart beloved his light is shining and your path is clear wherever you are on your journey here is the wisdom you need for the road ahead maybe you're stuck and want to move forward or you feel anxious and long to know what's next or you're ready for an uplifting reminder that god holds your future in his hand liz curtis his examines each word with care and adds a sprinkling of humor through her honest stories and personal examples. For each verse, you'll find a unique one-minute, one-step challenge and a do-it-now task that requires one minute or less. You'll soon discover how practical and meaningful the book of Proverbs is as you apply its ancient wisdom to your thoroughly modern life. And this includes a study guide. This is basically a daily devotional, so that's what I'm going to use it as. So we have this as an option. My second pick is Biblical Fiction. And we're going to try this one again. We're we going to try it again for like the God knows how many times. But I have Thief of Corinth by Tessa Afshar. And the reason why I picked this is because Thief of Corinth, Corinth, Corinthians, First and Second Corinthians. That's how I'm correlating this. But we know how I feel about this. I have given, this is the only book I've given a four stars from Tessa. And I don't know why I can't just give this a five stars. And I know a lot of you guys is like, probably like, why she want to give five stars. I love Tessa Afshar's writing. And as much as I love the writing in this book, there's something about it that I just could not connect with Ardene and her brothers and her father. And I just could not stand Paul in this book. So we have that. But um, this is an option. So my two options are going to be Thief of Corinth. This one is for First and Second Corinthians. And then 31 Proverbs, so like your path. Proverbs, there we go. So we have two options. I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with, but two options, okay? Four is to read a Christian nonfiction. So again, I have the 31 Proverbs to Light Your Path, but I do have another option here, and that's Calling and Separation by Bob Yandon. Now, I got the pleasure, I had the pleasure, excuse me, of hearing this man preach, um, speak at a leadership conference at a church, and he was phenomenal. He was comical. I enjoyed it. And he had some of his books for sale. So I picked up this one and another one, which is about leadership. And I really want to get into them. They're really small. They're not that large in chapter. They're less than 80 pages. Um, trying to see. Exactly. Yeah, they're literally about 80 pages. So they're quick reads. I could definitely read this in a day. And um, this one just sounds good. It says, Calling and Separation. He is a pastor. His name is Pastor Bob Yandon. Um, it's opening the door to your ministry and purpose. Have you ever wondered why some Christians, obviously called and anointed by God for ministry, never seem to move into the realm of success? We watch and wonder as they struggle with frustration, knocking on doors that never open, while others step easily into the pulpits and have opportunities knocking at their door. One minister prays from any speaking engagement while the other prays over stacks of invitations, seeking God's will for which invitations he should accept. Why are many called but so few chosen? The moment you were born again, God placed a supernatural key ring in your heart that holds every key you need for success in your Christian life. In this book, Bob Yandon reveals the keys to finding God's purpose for your life. You will discover how you can find supernatural wisdom and strength. Prepare to enter into your ministry. See God's power miraculously, miraculously at work. Have God's approval. Know the will of God concerning your life and find your eternal reward in heaven. God has a ministry for everyone, and he rewards all who are faithful to his call. Find out what God has in store for you. Whew. Mouthful. But, yeah, I just, I really want to dive into this. I also want to read the other book that he has, but I'm just going to include this one on my TBR for now. And I'll do, like, a wrap-up video in February of all the books I read for the readathon. But we have this as, like, my Christian nonfiction pick. And... 
Pastor Bob Gaining does have a YouTube channel. I do follow his YouTube channel, and I do find that some of the things that he says are pretty incredible. So I will leave a link. You just click the eye on the screen to go check out his YouTube channel. But we have this as my pick. All right, so prompt challenge number five is to read a book about good and evil. And I was a little like, what do I do? Do I want to read a fantasy? Do I not want to read a fantasy? Because I know I love me some fantasy. But I decided to go with a romantic suspense because this is also a buddy read. I'm doing with my sis Stephanie over at Colton Beauty and Books. I said it right this time, you guys. But it's going to be Mind Games by Nancy Mahel. This is the first book in the Kaylee Quinn Profilers. Yeah, Kaylee Quinn Profilers um, trilogy. I have books one and two. Book three is coming out this year. I cannot wait. But I have high hopes. I'm hoping, hoping to give this at least a four star rating. Um, I don't find that suspense novels get higher than a three and a half, but I have high hopes because I do have the whole, basically the whole trilogy. I'm working on getting the third book when it comes out. So hopefully that works. Buddy Reed, this is about good and evil. It's a serial killer versus the BAU, so good versus evil. But I'll quickly read the back of the book for you guys. So it says, FBI behavioral analysis Kaylee Quinn's methods may be highly unorthodox, but her talent is undeniable. She's done her best to establish a new life for herself. After being demoted and transferred to St. Louis, when a reporter revealed she's a daughter of an infamous serial killer. Ooh, I didn't know that part. I know there's a serial killer, like, after her, but I didn't know she was a daughter of one. That's interesting. Um... But when that same reporter claims to have received an anonymous poem predicting a string of murders, ending with Kaylee's, it seems her odd life has followed her. When a body is found that fits the poem's morbid predictions, Kaylee and her new partner, Special Agent Noah Hunter, are forced to move past his skepticism of her approach and work together to unravel the deadly rebel. With a brazen serial killer who breaks all the normal patterns on the loose, Noah and Kaylee must race to catch the murderer before anyone else, including Kaylee, is killed. So, it sounds like it's going to be an epic, like, good versus evil chase. I'm hoping there's a cute little romance between her and Noah. We need romance in every book. That's just, I'm, I'm a romance lover. I love romance. Period. So, I'm hoping they have, like, a cute, clean romance. Um, I'm ready for some action, some drama. I don't know how I feel about this whole serial killer thing. But we're gonna give it a go. This is my pick for good versus evil. So yeah. Okay, so prompt number six is to read a five star prediction. I don't really know. Because all my five star predictions I really read already in twenty at the end in December. So like I can't really include them in in this like at all because I read them. So I'm gonna leave that one blank and I'll come back to that like like I said when I do my wrap up in February and let you guys know what book I chose for that. But I literally don't know. Um I don't even, from this list, um, I don't even know. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna say Iscariot, hopefully, and, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with Iscariot right now for that prompt, but, um, I may, like I said, outside of these 10 books, I may read other books, so, right now, we just gonna say Iscariot, okay? Prompt number seven is to read a Christian fiction that is not biblical, so for that, you can do, uh, fantasy, you could do contemporary, you can do suspense, thriller, mystery, um, historical, anything like that. I'm just sticking to Mind Games by um, Nancy Mel. I probably will pick another book. Um, don't know. Right now, this is what I'm sticking to just because my TBR for January is extensive. Like I said, I have like almost 22 books on my list. Um, so I'm sticking to this for now, but most likely we'll find another book to read. Um, but we have this. This is romantic suspense. Definitely something I'm still trying to get into the hang of. But I may pick up another book. Actually, let me grab that book for you guys, and I'll come back. Okay, so the other book that I'm thinking of reading, because I've, I've, okay, I, I've had, I have a, a love hate relationship with this book. I've tried to read it so many times, and it's not that it's not good, because I was enjoying it. I just my capacity, my brain wasn't there, and I had a lot of other required readings. So, um, American o Omens by Travis Thrasher. Um, this is The Coming Fight for Faith. This was blurred by Jerry B. Jenkins, um, who is the author of the Left Behind series. Um, but what I do know is that, okay, I'm going to read it. It says, in this taut thriller that depicts a future where belief is dangerous, faith is deemed hatred, and a group of powerful elite keeps watch, the Reckoner has come to wake up America. This is your wake-up call, Cheyenne. You've been sleeping your whole life. Dreaming those dreams, the alarm clock is about to go off. There won't be any way to press the snooze button. So just keep walking, keep breathing, and maybe start believing. The year is 2038, and Cheyenne Byrne, I think that's how you say that, is a brilliant young programmer working for ACATOR. 
I'm, I'm gonna assume that's how you say that, Akator, <laughs> the world's top technology firm. Her father converts to Christianity and he suddenly disappears without a trace. When a stranger hands Cheyenne a coded message that sends her on a collision course with the clandestine group of believers, she must put her life in the hands of those following a man known only as the Reckoner. He claims he wants to bring back the true faith in Christ to America and also reveal the forces behind the disappearances of the many renowned people who publicly declare their Christian faith. Operating in the shadows and living off-grid, this mysterious prophet assembles a ragtag team, including a former bookseller whose store was shut down for selling prohibited books, to help him take the battle for transparency to the top. With a ruthless FBI agent closing in, can Cheyenne and the others expose the truth and lead a return to God in America before it's too late? So this is very much sci-fi, futuristic type of thing, dystopian. Um, the feels, it feels a little too real just because of the society that we live in, but this will most likely probably be my pick for prompt number seven. Yes, prompt seven. So this is an option. So I'm going to put this on TBR. It's a maybe, but it's going on the TBR. So yeah. Prompt number eight is to read a book that has one of the nine fruits of the spirits in the title. And I'm cheating here because I didn't, I didn't realize how hard it is when I did this prompt. Like I really didn't realize how hard it was. Um, and obviously you can pick any word from the nine fruits of the spirits, but I went with this one because this is actually my word of the year, which I don't think that video was up yet. It'll probably be up next week when my word of the year and stuff is and why I chose it. But my word of the year is love. So I'm going with this one by Robert Strand. Yeah, it's, um, his nine fruits of the spirit devotionals. I picked these up from, um, Dollar Tree a while ago and I got all nine of them and they just look like this. Um, they're little cute books that go through um some information on the word so you get the word what it is agape it gives you areas to like write in so i'm actually gonna do this because i've been wanting to start this book series for a long time um do one a month but i've just been slacking on it so i figured since my word of the year is love and um yeah i just would go with this one so i literally could have picked any other word but i decided to start with love since love is the first fruit of the spirit so a little bit cheating let me know if you guys had a bit of a difficult time finding a word um like a book to go along with that prompt because i didn't think about how hard it would be even with my christian nonfiction, it was pretty hard and the books that i wanted to pick i had already read so i'm cheating a bit but it was hard i'm not gonna lie it was really hard so we're go actually there was another book i could have went with but i don't want to read two books by the author this month so yeah but we have this as prompt number eight Okay, so prompt number nine is to read a Christian classic. And this, I'm pulling up the Signature Classics collection from C.S. Lewis, Lewis, The Bind Up. And for this one, I'm going to be reading Mere Christianity. I read the Screw Tape Letters last year. Totally freaking adored it. That book just, oh my god, it was everything and more to me. So I'm going to be reading Mere Christianity. And I'm excited to dive into that. I've heard a lot of people rave about Mere Christianity and the Screw Tape Letters. I was going to go with The Four Loves. By him because love is in there you know it goes with prompt eight but i already said i wanted to read mere christianity and i'm actually slacking on doing my review on this bind up um i didn't want the bind up because i knew it would take me some time to get through it which is why i wanted the um, individual books which if you want the box set that has individual books i'll leave it linked down below but you can get the bind up i feel like the bind up is easy to have but I also would have preferred just to have the individual books, which I'm probably still going to purchase the individual box set myself eventually. But um, we're going to go with Mere Christianity. And I'll probably throw that cover up here for you guys to see what the cover of that looks like. But I enjoyed Screw Tape Letters and I'm really excited to dive into Mere Christianity and get some really great things out of it. So that's my pick for that. My last prompt is prompt 10, which is to read a recommendation. And I had a lot of different books I could go with. But I'm going to go with this book because this one has been recommended to me for years, um, for years, even before I made this channel when I was a regular booktuber for years. And that's going to be Left Behind by Jerry B. Jenkins and Tim LaHaye. This book has been recommended to me too many times. And it's basically a post-apocalyptic type of world. I think it's like the end of the world and some people are caught up in the rapture and some are not. So, yeah. I'm interested to see how it is. I know that there's a movie. I know that there's also a teen version to the series. I'm reading the adult version. I own it all if you guys saw. Um, I don't know what book haul it was. I will link it linked in the cards above. But I did a book haul. I think it was like back in October though. It could have been in October. My October book haul. My library had their annual book sale. They have two a year. Spring and fall. Um, and they had literally all 12. There's 13 books in the series. They had 12. And then they also have two of the three books of the prequel. So I picked them all up. 
they were only a dollar so like come on um so i have them all want to read one a month want to read one a month i want to read one book a month from the series to read it for the end of the year so we have left behind hopefully i can enjoy this i really love the covers but this says a novel of the earth's last days and um let's just read the inside flap of it shall we so it says Vehicles suddenly unmanned, careen out of control. People are terror-stricken as loved ones vanish before their eyes. Some blame space aliens. Others claim a freak of nature. Still others say it was a high-tech military attack by a world conqueror. But airline captain Rayford Steele's wife had warned him of this very event. If Irene Steele was right, both she and their young son have disappeared. But what about their oldest daughter? Like Rayford, Chloe has been skeptical. In the midst of global chaos, Rayford must search for his family for answers for truth. As devastating as the disappearances have been, the darkest days may lie ahead. So, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be dark. It's going to be epic. This book is how many pages? Why do I do this to myself, y'all? Why, why? This 468 pages. Ooh. This is close to being called a tome. And if you guys don't know what a tome is, a tome is basically a book that has over 500 pages, which I tend to love big books, but I have a massive TBR this month, um, massive, so we'll see if I can get through all 10, um, but this is my selection for prompt number 10. So, those are my picks. I don't know if I'm gonna get through all of them, y'all gonna pray for me, right? Um, oof, we gonna pray. Um, I will be starting off with these first three books here so the first three i'm going to start off with is obviously the nine fruits of the spirits love by robert strand i'm also going to start off with pastor bob yannon's book calling and separation because it's only 80 pages i can fly through this and then also going to be starting off with 31 proverbs like your path because it's a daily devotional so um we're going to do this day by day and this is brand new Ooh, this is brand new like, I had an arc of this, and then they sent me a finished copy in the mail, which was awesome. So, I love that I have a finished copy. I think I gave my arc copy to my mom. So, um, yeah, we're gonna dive into this. So, the first one is... Oh, so yeah, this definitely goes through 31 different Proverbs, but it doesn't go in, like, order of, like, the chapters. So, um, the first one is called Morning by Morning, and it focuses on Proverbs 4 and 18. It says... The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. So, we're going to get into that. And they're not long. So, those are going to be the first three books that I start with for the year. I'm excited to start with these three books. I'm really stoked. Um, I think the next biblical fiction I want to read... Ugh, mm, we're going to put that last. Mm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to go about this because I have like so many books to pick from. So, I know I'm going to read Mind Games with Stephanie, so I have to figure out when we're going to read that. So, I'm going to save this maybe for the second week of January, because that's probably when we'll read it. So, we're going to go with Judas Iscariot. Um, I'm hoping this is a 5-star read, at least a 4.5. But, um, yeah, so those four will be the first books that I start off with. Um, and I'm super, super excited. I really am excited for this you know, readathon to be doing with you ladies. I love doing readathons. Like, I do one almost every month. Um, and I, th I just think it's a fun way to read books and um, challenge yourself to read books. And again, you don't have to stick to the prompts. The whole point of this readathon is to have fun. Have fun reading Christian fiction books. Um, this coincides with the Daughter of Increase 2020 reading challenge, which is to be intentional with your reading as well. Um, now, this doesn't mean I'm not going to read any of my secular books for this month like i said i have about 22 books i'm looking at my cart right now i have way too many books on that cart to read because we like reading and if you guys follow my other channel which is nay's pink bookshelf you sh you would know i have a lot of books to read for the month of january because i did it to myself i let my son pick out my tbr and he picked out a few books so yeah fingers crossed pray for me that i can get through this but i will do a separate wrap-up um at the end of January, all about the readathon. There is going to be two giveaways, hopefully. I'm hoping to do two giveaways, one definitely for the photo challenge, um, for sure. But um, I'm hoping to have two giveaways at the end of this readathon, in which I will give away some biblical fiction books because I have a lot of biblical fiction, Christian fiction books that are sitting here that are like double copies um, that I have purchased from like thrift books and stuff like that. So. We have that, but this is my TBR, guys. I don't know if I can hold this up. We're going to try. We're going to try to hold this up. We're going to try to hold this up. So if the camera is shaking, I'm sorry. 
I apologize, but oh, see, I'm forgetting books already. Okay, can I do it? Let's see if I can do it. How we do it on book two? This is my TBR for now. Um, pray for me, and I'll keep you guys updated. If you guys want to stay updated, of course, follow me on Goodreads and Instagram. Um, and I think that's it. So let me know if you're joining in for this readathon. Um, and you can join anytime. It's not like you have to join immediately. Um, this is a one month long readathon. So it's going to go from January 1st to the 31st. Um, the prompts, which are listed down below, you can go to my blog to get a PDF copy if you want or just to check the prompts out. But the prompts, you don't have to pick a book for each prompt. You don't even really have to use the prompts. I, I just did the prompts because I thought it would be fun for other people to find books to help them build their TBR. But again, the goal is to read Christian-based books, be it Christian nonfiction, Christian fiction, biblical fiction, Christian historical fiction, Christian thrillers. I don't care what it is. As long as it's intentional with faith building and growing in your faith, that is the whole point of this <laughs> challenge or readathon. So yeah, if you are going to post this on your social medias, use the hashtag DOIFaithReads um because i want to be able to see it i can't see it if y'all if you don't hashtag it um and also hashtag daughter of increase as well and i think that's it i'm gonna end here because these books are about to fall off my lap and i want to start my reading today so yeah um i really wanted to do a um blog style video for the readathon but that ain't gonna work so depending on how well this one goes i may do another one in the fall um but right now I'm thinking this is going to be like an annual thing where I do the Faith Reads Readathon in January. Now, again, you guys know how I feel about the title. If you guys have any other like idea of a name, let me know. Um, because I feel like Faith Reads Readathon is so like dull. But if you guys are cool with it, then I'm cool with it. Um, but yeah, depending on how this goes, I may do like a fall winter one. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So again, if you are interested in joining in for the Faith Reads Readathon photo challenge just check down below for more information as well as my instagram i'm gonna always be posting on instagram i'm gonna try to stick to posting once a day on instagram i really want to try to get to two times a day but once a day as of now but that is it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next video bye